There's a game called Skull. Uh, this is basically when you were a kid and somebody described poker to you, this is what you thought it was. There's a game about bluffing, raising, calling the other person's bluff, uh, but basically without any of the math or waiting for good hands that comes up with poker. Uh, what's going to happen at the beginning of the game is everyone's going to choose a color. You're going to have this mat. You're going to want it on the skull side face up. So you see there's a skull or a flower. We're going to want the skull side face up. And you're going to get four discs of the color of that mat. Each of these discs, three of those cards are flowers, and one of those cards is a skull. On your turn, you're going to take one of those four discs from your hand, and you're going to put it face down on your mat. It's going to go clockwise. The next player is going to take a card or a disc. They're going to put it face down. Next player, next player. It's going to come back to the first player. Once everybody has placed one disc on their mat, every turn going forward, they have two choices. Either they can enter a bid. Whenever they enter a bid, we're done placing discs on the mat, and we go on to the next phase. Or they place another disc, in which case the next player goes, and they have that exact same choice. So for the sake of example, let's say every player places another disc, goes back around, the green player places a third disc, comes to the purple player, and the purple player decides they want to enter a bid. So when you enter a bid, you're going to say a number. That number is how many of these discs you think you can turn over without revealing a skull. The catch, though, is that you have to start with your own discs, and you're always working from the top down. So if I entered my bid as three, normally people could outbid you, but let's say they all passed, you'd now have to fulfill a bid of three. So that means you're going to turn over the first disc that you've got, you're going to turn over the second disc that you've got, so that's one, two, you're going to have to turn over one more disc that's out there without revealing a skull. If you turn over a skull, you lose, but if you turn over another card from another player's pile that's also a flower, then you win. If you win, you get a point, you flip this over from the skull side to the flower side, and we start a new round. Everyone takes their discs back. If, we, if you lose, it's going to stay on the skull side. You stay at zero points. And for your penalty for revealing a skull is you're going to shuffle up your hands. You're going to lose one card at random, or one disc at random. No one, except for you, is going to know which disc you lost. Everyone's going to take back their uh, discs, and we're going to do another turn. But that's what happens if I bid and nobody tops my bid. Let's say I bid three, and then let's say blue bids four. What blue is now saying, their bid is four. If everyone else passes, now blue has to start with their own two cards. They go one, two, and then they start turning over other cards. Once you've turned over your own two, you can top, flip over the top card of anyone's pile. And then once you've flipped over that one, you can either flip over the next card of their pile or the top card of a different pile. So basically, you're working your way from the top down through each of the piles that are out there. But you can hop from one pile to the other. You can do all of one pile at once, as long as you're always, when you pull from a given pile, pulling the card that's at the top of that pile. Let's say purple said three, blue said four, yellow passed, green said five. These players both passed. Green now has to flip over theirs. They go one, two, three, and then again they get to flip over two others. Now here's the key thing about this game, is that each player, when they said whatever their number was, if everyone else had passed, they would have flipped over their own cards first. So when purple said three, they were essentially announcing to the room, these cards are both flowers. Because if everyone else passed and one of these was a skull, they would have turned over a skull and they basically would have damaged themselves. When blue said four, they basically were announcing to the room, both of their cards are flowers. Because if everyone else passed, they would turn over their cards first. And if either of them was a skull, then blue would get damaged. However, like I said, this is a game about bluffing. It's possible somebody said the number they said earlier in the hopes that somebody would say a higher number and now assume that their pile is going to be flowers. So as this game's going along, you're trying to sort of figure out, do I think the other people are lying or telling the truth when they say whatever number it is they're saying? As far as the bidding process works, you don't just have to increment it by one. So I could bid three, you could hop up to six. If I've got two discs out here, I could start off with a bid of one. I don't necessarily have to do both of them. Um, and whenever somebody passes during the bidding process, they're out of the bidding. They can't later re-enter. 
like I said, if you successfully, whatever number it is you, ha you say, you turn over that many cards and it's all flowers, you flip this over, you have a point, you then start the next round, everyone takes their cards back, you place a card, works the same way as the first round. Uh, if you lose, you lose a card at random, but then you again start the, as the first player for the next round and you go just like you did with the first round. It's possible that somebody will lose uh, because they flipped over a skull and that will mean they lose their final disc and they are removed from the game. Of course, if that happens, they can't go first in the next round. So the person whose skull they turned over, that player would go first in the next round. If all of your discs are pulled out of the game, you lose the game and the last player left standing wins. Or if somebody gets to two points, then they win. So either one of those would trigger somebody winning and therefore the end of the game. Uh, that's how you play skull. Enjoy.